fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Hello, friends. This is The Lone Ranger. I'd like you to listen to something. All over the country, in every direction, how you, how you do it is the question, and here's one the hammer that these people have to pay. You know, that's right. People in various parts of the country have different accents, perhaps, or dress a little differently. But the ones with plenty of drive, the go-getters, have one thing in common. They're careful about their diet. They see to it that they eat a good, honest breakfast every day. And a breakfast built around wheat couldn't be better for you. Wheat is real man food. So, bear in mind. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Silver! Lone Ranger and Toto rode into the valley. Toto, look ahead. Smoking ruins of a wagon train. Ah, uh, that's bad. We'll see if there are any survivors. Come on, Toto. Come on, Toto. Within a few minutes, the masked man and his Indian companion reined to a stop at the scene of the attack. Oh, Toto. Oh, Toto. Oh, Toto. These were army transports, Toto. Ah. I'm attacked by Indians. We see plenty error. No one survived. This must be the work of Chief Lightfeather and his braves. I hope something could be done to get them to return to the reservation before they went on the warpath. Now, them have plenty guns and ammunition. That means more trouble, Kimasabi. We'll ride to the fort and report the attack. Let's go. He's got his The Lone Ranger had come into the territory because of a written request he had received from the Major through the Padre at the mission. It was this note which procured him ready admittance to the Major's headquarters. Major, here's the math man. Oh, have him come right in, Lieutenant. You come in, too. Yes, sir. Come right in, mister. Thanks. I thunder it's mighty good to see you again, my friend. Sit down, sir. Sit down. Thank you, Major DeWitt. As soon as the guard brought in that note I'd sent you, I had the lieutenant go out to escort you to my headquarters. Sit down, Lieutenant. All right, thank you, sir. Lieutenant Kinney is the only one who knew I sent for you. Major, I have bad news. Bad news? What do you mean? On our way here, my friend Toto and I found the ruins of a wagon train. What? Army transport. Indians had attacked and there were no survivors. Great heavens. They must be the wagons that were bringing the rifles and ammunition. We expected them late today. And what I feared has started. Chief Lightfeather and his Indians have gone on a warpath. That's right, Major. The signs showed there were hundreds who took part in the attack. Well, this is serious, Major. We needed those rifles and the ammunition greatly. And, and to have them in the hands of those Indians means they're now in good condition to make plenty of trouble. Strange that the Indians knew what was in those wagons. We have transports bringing foodstuffs every week. And no one knew we were expecting rifles and ammunition on this trip. No one knew except us, Major, and the trusted picked men who were bringing them in. You're new here at the fort, aren't you, Lieutenant? I, yes, sir. Well, that is, I came here two months ago. You see, sir, Kinney's a replacement for Lieutenant. 
I should say former Lieutenant Hooker. The officer you met when you were here before. Oh, what happened to Hooker? I noticed you said uh, former lieutenant. Hooker was court-martialed and expelled from the service for insubordination and conduct unbecoming an officer. I see. Frankly, I didn't like Hooker when I met him. Uh, he was a disgrace to the service, sir. I knew Lieutenant Kinney back east and requested he be sent here because I know he's to be trusted. Oh, thank you, Major. Now to the matter at hand. Make out a report of the disaster, Lieutenant. Then send it by courier with a requisition for more rifles and ammunition. Yes, sir. It will take about a month for the new shipment to come through from the supply depot at Fort Worth. I know, I know. But I hope there'll be no further trouble before they arrive. Why did you send for me, Major? I value your advice and judgment, sir. With your keen knowledge of the Indians, I'd hoped you might help me think of some way to reason with Chief Lightfeather. His success in getting arms for his braves will make him more determined to resist going back to the reservation. I know. I realize the situation is a tense one. I'll send to Fort McCavitt, 30 miles north of here, for reinforcements. Then you think the Indians might even attack the fort? It's possible. How do I keep watch and let you know what we find out? All right, sir. I'll send someone to McCavitt at once. Just knowing you're near will be a relief. Oh, thanks. We'll do all we can. Goodbye for a while, sir. Goodbye, sir. The Lone Ranger met Toto outside the fort, and the two men rode into the nearby hills and made a temporary camp. The sun had gone down, and the bright moon lighted the countryside. The Lone Ranger told Toto of his talk with the Major. Then he added, We'll ride into the foothills and try to locate the Indians' encampment. Ah. I noted the general direction they took when we looked at the pony tracks in the valley this afternoon. Now, what we do if we find the Indian camp? Try to find out what they might do next, Toto. Let's get going. Come on, Come The Lone Ranger and Toto, continually on the alert for any sign of prowling Indians, rode several miles into the foothills. Finally, they moved along a ridge that overlooked a secluded valley. They drew rain oh, along the trees as they heard distant drums and caught a glimpse of a big campfire below. Easy, steady, big fella. The masked man and his companion crawled to the edge of the ridge and cautiously looked down. These celebrations come to an end, Tonto. Ah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Good. The chief is walking to the center of the ring of braves. There's a white man with him. I can't quite make out who. Now he's facing this way. Him, fellow from Fort, maybe. I recognize him. He's Hooker, the man who was cashiered from the army. Oh. Maybe him behind all trouble. That's what I think. Now Hooker's mounting a horse alone. Here, take a look. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, me see him. Him leave now. Ride to Ender Valley. We'll cut down along the ridge and follow him, Toto. Let's get to the horses. Ah. Uh. Come on, Silver. Come up, Scout. The Lone Ranger and Tonto followed Hooker for some distance. Finally, the ex-officer turned off the trail and stopped before a dark, deserted shack. The Lone Ranger and Tonto waited until they saw a light in the shack. Then they approached on foot cautiously. A piece of burlap hung on the inside of the partly open side window. There was a narrow, uncovered space at the bottom which allowed the masked man and Indian a view of the interior. They saw Hooker talking to an Indian dressed in buckskins. Well, I just came from the Indian camp. Now it's plan to fetch. Me come from Fort Terrett. Wait here like before. You bring more news? Huh. And send out Ryder to Fort McCavitt. Try to get other troopers come to Fort Terrett. That Ryder isn't going to get very far. Life better have plenty of braves walking the trail to Fort McCavitt. Uh. Now, uh... Major doesn't know about the requisition, Black. You sneaked from the office and brought to me a few weeks ago, does he? Him not find out. After you ride on blank, me follow sergeant to take troopers to get rifles and ammunition. Yes. Him think me bring paper from Fort Terrace. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did the trick. It got them to bring all the stuff we wanted. We got it when we attacked the wagon train. Are Light Feather and Braves ready to attack Fort Terrace after dawn? Yes. Now, you'd better get back to the fort. Let's get away from here quick. Uh -huh. We'll wait here in the trees until they leave. Uh -huh. 
Me not savvy. What him say about paper him thick? I don't either, but I'm going to find out. I'll go to Fort Terratoto, warn them about the coming attack. The fort should fall. A general massacre of all nearby settlers would follow. Uh, light go out and shack now. Yeah. So you haven't much time, Toto. First, I want you to go to town and stop the telegraph office. Then you must find a way to get through to Fort McCabot. It's a matter of life and death. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope a steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's feeling his Cheerios. 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 You bet. Cheerios, the oat cereal that needs no cooking. Every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. And besides giving you go power, Cheerios is downright wonderful tasting. That toasted oat flavor is really something. And when you add milk and your favorite fruit, say some sliced bananas, you're in for a delicious breakfast treat. Get the whole family off to a good start every morning with Cheerios. Then you'll hear people say... He's stealing his Cheerios. Now to continue. After scribbling a message for Toto to send by telegraph... The Lone Ranger mounted Silver and rode hurriedly to Fort Terrace. Now I understand much of what's going on. Major, I took the liberty of sending a telegraph message to Fort Worth in your name. You mean in regard to that forged requisition you told me about? Yes, that's right. The answer to that telegram may decide how we'll meet the expected attack at dawn. Well, I'll return to town now and wait there for the answer. I'll be back as soon as possible, Major. Good night. Good night, sir. Major... Are you sure that masked man is to be trusted? Um, just what are you driving at, Kenny? Just this, sir. You trusted Hooker once, and he turned crooked. That masked man might betray us to Chief Lightfeather for his own gain. I thunder, Kenny, I sent for the Lone Ranger, and I... I'll stake my career. I'll resign my command if he doesn't come back and prove to be everything I believe him to be. As time passed, the Lone Ranger failed to return. Meanwhile, the man Hooker rode to the Indian stronghold and dismounted in front of the chief's wigwam. He wore an officer's uniform. All right, hello, hello. Eddie? He stood for a moment watching the war dance which was in progress. Chief Lightfeather came forward and spoke. Land of white brother done. Many braves ready to follow you. Light feather and other braves follow and wait over ridge in front of court. It's good, Chief Light Feather. We shall not fail. Ah, wisdom of white brother is great. Now I'll inspect the braves who will follow. They must obey the orders I have given and shall give. Time short. You train them well. Braves of Chief Light Feather will obey white brother. Come, we go see now. There was a tenseness throughout the fort as the night wore on. This tenseness increased as one of the white army scouts arrived with the news that the courier who had started for Fort McCavitt to request reinforcements had been found dead a few miles away. Lieutenant Kinney stood with a major on one of the ramparts near the front gates. He was saying, Major, matters are most serious. If an attack is imminent, seems it's been a mistake. To put all our faith in that match, man. You dare question my judgment, Lieutenant? No, it isn't that, sir. But the fate of all of us is soon to be decided. Dawn is almost here, and we're in no position to ward off a big attack. I'm well aware of that. But remember, the Lone Ranger is the one who warned us of an attack. It might be that he did so to keep us all here. 
while the Indians moved to strike elsewhere. Sir. I don't believe it. May I remind you, sir, that a trip to town and back would take far less than an hour's time. The man you call the Lone Ranger hasn't returned, though many hours have gone by. Time will tell. Sun's just coming up. If there's to be an attack, is it? Hey, what? Huh? Something is coming. Someone got through. Uh, Son of the men are right. Look yonder. A company of troopers is heading for the fort. Well, that's still a quarter of a mile away. Shall I give orders to open the gates, sir? Yes, by all means. Stand by to open the gates. Yes, sir. Look, Major. Swinging in a wide circle around them. A horseman riding at a gallop. I'll use binoculars. Let's see. Why, it's the Lone Ranger. Why does he... The troopers are firing at him. He seems to be just out of range. They're shooting because of his mask. Come down to the gates with me. Yes, sir. Hurry. Over those gates now. Yes. Troopers are galloping after him. Still shooting. They're making a mistake. But thank heaven he's out of range. Here he comes. Oh, no, oh he's going to be cut Quick, Major. Close the gates. Turn your guns on those men. That man is crazy, sir. Don't listen. He's trying to trick us. Those are that. not troopers. That's Hooker leading disguised Indians. Close the gates before it's too late. Believe me, Major, I have proof. Close the gates. Open fire. I'll not let you make this mistake, Major. Get out of the way. Quick. Close these gates. Hurry. Close them. Thunder, they are Indians. I got a glimpse of Hooker leading them. That's right. Look, others are coming over the ridge now. The rest of the Indians. As the troopers watched, a wave of Indians rolled over the ridge and moved toward the fort. The disguised Indians, enraged by the discovery of their trickery, tossed away the army hats and jackets they wore, disclosing their true identity. As the waves of mounted Indians pressed forward, many of those in front rolled back and forth, shooting at the stockade walls. The battle went on unabated. The Lone Ranger and the Major climbed to the ramparts carrying rifles. From this vantage point, the masked man saw Hooker, encouraging the Indians as he galloped along in front of the stockade and seemingly just out of range. The Major spoke. There's that traitor, Hooker. Disgracing the uniform he has the nerve to wear. It's a long shot, but I'm going to try to bring him down. As the Lone Ranger aimed his rifle in hopes of wounding Hooker, two frenzied Indians who had been riding well ahead of the traitor suddenly turned and shot arrows directly at the uniformed man. Hooker fell to the ground with an arrow in his breast. Look, an arrow struck Hooker. I think it killed him. The Indians blame him for the failure of his own plan. Well, at least it saved you a bullet. It's best that he go that way, sir. Look, more Indians coming. Our chase was hopeless. We'll soon run out of ammunition. We'll keep fighting until that happens, Major. As the battle continued without let-up, it seemed the Indians would soon win the fort by a force of numbers. Then a welcome sound was heard. Major, look. Now the troopers are really coming. But how did they know? Otto went for them last night. For a short time, the Indians, caught between the fire from the fort and from the approaching troopers, tried to fight back. Then as their chief fell wounded, they broke, scattering in all directions. The battle was over. The Major turned and, for a moment, placed his hand on the Lone Ranger's shoulder, a silent gesture that spoke his extreme thanks. Then the two men climbed down to order the gates opened and to meet the approaching troopers. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Toto stood with a small group of officers near the fort gate. The captain who had led the reinforcements was speaking. Major, the day is full of surprises. First, you introduce a masked man as a friend, and second, we discovered many of the Indians wearing parts of trooper uniforms and using army saddle sets. The Major will explain both the mask and the uniforms, Captain. I'll explain about the uniforms first, Captain. My friend, whom you designate as the Masked Man, became suspicious concerning a certain Ford requisition he knew about. He telegraphed the supply depot last night. This is the reply he received. Replied to your inquiry, requisition forms received by us some weeks ago called for a stated amount of rifles and ammunition and for 50 complete uniforms and army saddles. Respectfully the requisition known. for the uniforms and saddles was forged by ex-Lieutenant Hooker. He was working hand in glove with the Indians. I still don't see what that is. The wagon to... train bringing the supplies was attacked. Hooker planned that when he sent that requisition. You were clever enough to suspect trickery, sir. But what kept you so long? Oh, the telegram was late in coming. I realized Hooker wanted those uniforms and saddles for a purpose. 
I saw him right out of town and followed. When I saw him leave the Indian camp with Indians dressed as troopers, I knew his plan. And at the risk of your life, you reached us just before Hooker and his disguised Indians did. I didn't have time to give you the telegram and point out what it meant, Major. I'm proud that you had faith enough in my word to act as you did. I... I've been listening to what has been said, and I... Well, sir... Lieutenant, I'm sorry for the rough treatment. There was no time for argument or explanation. Oh, gosh, I... I don't know how to apologize for what I Apologies thought. aren't necessary. You were doing your duty as you saw it, Lieutenant. May I shake your hand, sir? Yes, why, of course. Hooker and Chief Lightfeather are both dead. You'll have no trouble rounding up the Indians to go back to the reservation. Well, with those two out of the way, I'm sure we'll have no further trouble. Tonto and I'll leave now, sir. We're glad we were able to help. We're both proud of the men who serve our country so well. And we're proud, my friend, to have two such loyal and courageous Americans serving the West. Thank you, Major, and goodbye. Goodbye, sir. Adios, gentlemen. Adios. 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 Ah, by thunder, there goes a real man. Mm, I agree with that, Captain. But, Major, you forgot to explain who he is, sir. No, I didn't forget, Captain. I didn't want to embarrass him by saying that his name will go down in history for his valiant deeds. Deeds performed as a true American, without the desire for personal gain or glory. You see, Captain, I couldn't say that in front of the Lone Ranger. copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy. Listen to the Lone Ranger brought to you by special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.